Muy buenas noches, Jonathan. Mucho gusto. Buenas noches. Mucho gusto. Eh, veo que está por aquí. Jonathan, mucho gusto. Briselda Castro, bienvenida a la videoconferencia. No sé si me puede, este, por favor, indicar si se escucha bien el audio. Yes, good evening, teacher. Hi, good evening. Welcome. Um, so we're going to start in a minute uh, the video conference. Just uh, I need to set up some things here in my computer in order to share my screen. Give me a second, okay? Okay. Okay, um, can you see my, my my computer screen? Yes, no? Yes, teacher. Okay, so very good. So um, as you know, we're going to be uh, working uh, tonight on a topic that we left um, this previous Wednesday, okay? I don't know if you remember uh, what we were discussing. You remember that? Yes, no? No, teacher. No, okay. So we are going to have a review uh, tonight. Well, um, on Wednesday, we start section number four. And in section number four, we have a, the, the section unit that it says what a uh, story. And we were discussing, uh, well, we we're uh, working on um, the past perfect tenses. Um, I remember that the day we were uh, discussing about how to construct affirmative sentences, how to construct um, negative statements uh, or sentences, uh, and how to construct interrogative uh, sentences. So um, now, we are going to be just watching some videos that are going to uh, give us a review of how to, or what it, or in the way that we can construct that kind of statements. So we're there on the on the video. We're going to watch the structure uh, of how how we have to write it down. We need to if we needed to um, create a sentence. So remember also that in, in this uh, past perfect, uh, we're discussing that we, uh, one of the uses of this, uh, of the past per perfect is for an event that occurred before another event. So, um, or uh, also, I remember that I said that the, this past perfect is also used for a, a time period in the past. So when uh, some, when, when we uh, refer to an event that started in the past, continues in the past, it, and it was interrupted by another event, okay? So 
I'm going to play this video and then I will be uh, giving you some feedback about this. Okay, so please pay attention to it. Uh, just uh, take a look of the verse that uh, he will be using in this uh, slide. And then we're going to be taking those examples in order to create some models, okay? Okay, here we have, uh, pay attention to it. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to form past perfect statements. We'll learn the structure and practice. So let's get started. In our previous lesson, we learned about the past perfect. And it's always important to keep that in mind. We use the past perfect to express an event that occurred before another event in the past. Uh, today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn about the structure. So let's get started. I would like to start by making positive statements. So the first thing that I would like to point out is uh, just the structure and then we'll see how that structure works. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so that you can see clearly. So in order to form the past perfect, we're gonna have a subject and then that is gonna be followed by an auxiliary. That happens to be hat, as you can see there, color in red. And then after that, we, uh, we're going to follow the past participle of the verb. So we're going to include the past participle of the verb. And then finally, we will have a complement to that sentence. In the example, we see that we're using the past event and the past perfect event. And that's because we're combining two tenses together and we're using those accordingly. So as you can see, we, we see the past event here and then we have the past perfect event as a continuation of that. But I mentioned that um, we, these sentences can be separate or they can be together. So let's look at the examples at this time. Um, I mentioned that we're gonna have some sort of subject, so we're gonna say someone, all right? And I'm gonna borrow that second example that you see there at the bottom. Uh, this follows the axular bird. This in this case is gonna be hat. And then this is going to be this is going to follow the past participle of whatever verb that I'm using. So in this case, uh, the verb it's steal, all right, and the past participle of that verb it's stolen. Okay, so someone had stolen my wallet. Just to emphasize uh, what we're doing, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, try to see if I can. If I can point this out in the right place so that we can clearly see what is it that I'm talking about. So the subject is someone. All right, so I should color this maybe blue, or the same thing as it's in red. The auxiliary verb is in red. And then the past participle is uh, the verb that we're going to use in uh, the past participle. So in this case, I'm using the color uh, green. So let's look at the other examples that are on this chart up here. I have put my stuff in my locker. So first of all, we have the subject is I. It follows the auxiliary verb had. And then the past participle of the verb, in this case, is put. Um, and then we will include a complement. I have put my stuff in my locker. My stuff in my locker will be the complement. Um, finally, we have another sentence. Uh, that we want to emphasize, and so let me do that right now. Okay, so we have, I have forgotten to lock the locker. So uh, once again, we have the subject in that sentence is I, excluded verb have, the past participle of the verb forget, it's forgotten, and then the complement becomes to lock the locker. Now, quickly, what I want to explain is how to make negative statements in the past perfect. Let me go ahead and um, give a couple of examples here. Um, there are no negative sentences in this little chart, so I'm going to make those and I'm going to try to um, <clears throat> make sense of them. So let me first explain the structure of that. Uh, so the structure to make negative sentences. 
negative statements or negative sentences. It's pretty much the same thing. Um, the only thing that changes is that instead of had, we're going to include hadn't. Uh, by the way, this is also the same thing as saying had not. So you might see that either by saying had not or hadn't. Now, the most common thing to do is that we will use the contraction. All right, so most of the time, you'll see contractions to that effect. So let me give you then a few examples, and then um, I'm going to have you do a few examples as well. All right. So I'm going to try to see if I can fit those in into the structure that we see here. Subject is I. In this case, I mentioned we're going to use hadn't. All right. So let me just make sure that we're using the appropriate colors here, just to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing. So. Uh, in that case, that's the auxiliary verb, uh, and in this case, because it's a negative, we, we're going to say hadn't. Um, then we use the past participle of that verb. Uh, so in this case, um, it's locked, uh, the past participle that is locked. Um, maybe another quick example that you can probably relate to is the following. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. I hadn't finished my work, so I couldn't leave work at, at that time. So what I would like for you to do next is I would like for you to practice this concepts, practice making positive statements following this structure, and practice making negative statements. You can follow this structure. Okay, uh, we're going to be working um, right now on an exercise that I, that I will share to you um, through a link. These exercises are about the past perfect tenses. Um, before uh, going that, um, I, I wanna know if you have any question about this topic. If you have any question, I can explain to you uh, or it, it's, um, do you have any doubt how, how to use the, the verbs or how to use the structure so I can explain it? Or everything is clear? More or less. Teacher. More or less. So uh, what do you think um, uh, I need to explain in, in this topic, sir, in order to be more specific? What do we want to know? In the negative, negative uh, uh, the negative statements. Negative okay. Uh, okay. I, I will share a, a whiteboard right now, and let's see how this work. Um, so for negative for negative statements, uh, we are going to be using the same structure. In this case, I'm going to uh, write it here. Negative. Negative statements. Okay, there. So um, for negative statements, uh, we are going to be using the subject plus the auxiliary hat. In this case, it must be in plus. And we are going to be using the adverb not. It, this is the, the this um, a particle, this structure is going to transform all the sentence in a negative statement, okay? Uh, subject plus the auxiliary hat plus not. Also, we are going to add, in this case, a verb in, in it must be a, a verb in, in participle, okay? Do you know what a uh, verb participles or, or do you know um, how we can use that, that kind of verbs in participle? Because there, there are two type of verbs. The, the first one uh, are the ones that uh, end in ed, um, and the other ones are uh, the ones that we change all the structure. I don't know if you know about those uh, type of verbs. No? 
So I will explain uh, something a little bit about, about that. Okay, the, the varying participles, so you know we have three, uh, well, we have two um, uh, different uh, tenses in the case of the verb in past. Uh, I'm going to write the present also in order to, you can, you can uh, catch the idea about what I'm explaining. Uh, for instance, we're going to start with regular verbs. The regular verbs are verbs that just end in ed uh, in past. Work. Okay, in this case, work is gonna, gonna be the present tense. Present, past. And pass participle. I'm going to move this. Give me just a second. There. Okay, and here we have the, the, the verb work. Work's gonna be the present. The present form. In pass, ver, this verb it has to finish with ed. Work. Okay, work. And in past participle, it's going to be the same because all verbs that finish in ed in past are going to be the same in past participle. Work. That's mean this word. Okay, work. In Spanish, um, how we can identify this? Um, in Espanol, estos verbos, el participio de estos verbos. Eh, nosotros los podemos identificar de la siguiente manera. Tenemos los verbos en presente, verbos en pasado y los verbos en pasado participio. En presente, nosotros decimos trabajar, en su forma infinitiva, sin conjugarlo, trabajar. En pasado, trabajé, trabajé. Y ahí de, las diferentes variantes según la conjugación que vamos a utilizar. Y en pasado participio son aquellos verbos que necesitan un, un auxiliar para que nosotros los podamos utilizar, porque su significado sería trabajado, ¿sí? En una oración, yo puedo decir, yo trabajé, y está correcto, pero sería incorrecto decir, yo trabajado, porque no tiene sentido la oración. Aquí es donde entra el pasado este, eh, perfecto, en inglés, lo mismo, es, es el mismo fenómeno, fenómeno ¿sí? Yo puedo decir, I work, y está bien. Pero si yo utilizo el, el, el pasado participio del verbo, no tiene sentido. Como en el español, para utilizar el pasado participio trabajado, yo necesito el auxiliar eh, e, de, de, de haber, perdón. El auxiliar, de, 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 en este caso, del el verbo auxiliar, en este caso sería haber. Yo he trabajado. Él ha trabajado. Ahí sí tiene sentido la oración. Ok, lo mismo sucede en, en inglés. El mismo fenómeno, ¿sí? El hat es el equivalente del haber en, en español. I had work. De la misma forma podemos construir nosotros oraciones negativas. I had not work. Ok, yo no he trabajado. Él no ha trabajado. Ese trabajado, el, la, las, los verbos que terminan en ado, este, son los que conocemos como pasado participio, ¿sí? Ahora, estos son verbos eh, regulares, ¿sí? Por llamarlos de una forma, son los verbos normales. Uh, luego tenemos otro tipo de verbo, que es el verbo irregular. ¿Qué sucede con este tipo de verbo? que cambia su estructura en pasado. Voy a colocar aquí un verbo. Forget. ¿Conocen el pasado ustedes de... de, uh, de, de este verbo? Forgot. 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 ¿Y el pasado participio? Forgotten. Uh, forgotten. Ok.
de esta forma? ¿Sí lo, sí lo visualizan? Sí. Vale, ahí yes. está. Yeah. Olvidar, olvidé, olvidado. Estos que cambian su estructura en el pasado son los que se le conocen como verbos irregulares. Porque eh, no cumplen una regla específica. Y un detalle con estos verbos irregulares es que no existe una forma o una regla específica que nosotros este, podamos utilizar para convertirlos en pasado. ¿Qué sucede con ellos o qué hay que hacer entonces? Sencillo, aprendérnoslos todos, todos los que podamos. Imagínense, son una gran lista de verbos irregulares. Así que este, eh, para ello, pues, simplemente es práctica ir aprendiéndose dos, tres, cuatro, ¿sí? De manera que pues los vayamos manejando, porque no hay otra forma de, 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 de identificarlos, ¿sí? Ya después le voy a pasar un, un listado de verbos irregulares en, en, en WhatsApp. Okay. Ahora, ya tenemos estos dos tipos. Ahí solamente es identificar si el verbo es regular o es, es irregular, pero eso ya, ya es este, otro cuento. Ahora, eh, voy a mover un poquito esto por acá. Voy a dejar por acá. Y esto otro aquí. Y voy a mover esto aquí. Y esto aquí. Aquí prácticamente a esta oración, esta, esta estructura, solamente me hace falta utilizarle eh, un complemento. We're going to be using a complement. So, this way. Subject plus hat plus not plus verb eh, in participle. Uh, I have a mistake here. This is an, uh, uh, must, must be an A. I, I think you understand what I'm trying to do there because I, I just want to add an H. Participle, okay. Um, if we're going to construct a sentence, so, Well, in this case, you're going to be helping me to construct this sentence. Can you tell me a subject? Subject? I. Okay, I. Had in this case, right? Because where are you going to use the auxiliary? What else? Not. not. The adverb not. Tell me a very in past participle. Great writing. Broken. Broken. Okay. Broken. And a compliment. The dishes. Okay. The dish. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have. I have not broken the dishes. I had not broken the dishes. En español, ¿cómo se traduce esto? Yo no quebré los platos. Mm, más o menos. Yo no he quebrado los platos. Mm, también hace falta algo ahí. El hat no está en presente, está en pasado. ¿Cómo sería en pasado? Ese auxiliar. Yo no he quebrado los platos. Plan. Yo no he quebrado el frat. Sigue estando en, en presente ese verbo. Así como lo menciona. Debe ser en pasado. Yo no había quebrado los platos. Exactamente. Ahí. El había. Sí, porque el, el, el hat tiene que estar en pasado. Yo no había quebrado los platos. ¿Qué sucede con esto? Y yo esto lo mencionaba en la clase anterior. Que en el caso del eh, el pasado perfecto, sucede que la idea nos queda incompleta tenemos que nosotros complementarla con un evento que interrumpe esto, ¿sí? Por ejemplo, yo puedo decir, yo este, no había quebrado los platos hasta que Gerardo llegó, ¿sí? Algo, algo, algo este, eh, parecido, ¿sí? Lo que sucede es que este... este 
pasado perfecto, cuando nosotros lo vamos a utilizar, va a ser generalmente interrumpido por un evento en pasado. Y este pasado puede ser un pasado simple, o sea, una oración en pasado simple, o puede ser un pasado eh, continuo, pero siempre se interrumpe. Eh, otro ejemplo podría ser en español, yo no había estudiado para el examen hasta que Alex me dijo, ¿sí? ¿Te comprende la idea? Yes. yes. yes, yes. En, inglés, ¿En inglés cómo podría ser esa, esa oración? Yo no había estudiado para el examen hasta que Alex me dijo. I haven't studied for the exam until Alex say, 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 told me. Say, told, me. Mm -hmm. told me. Ok, very good. So, uh, ahí tenemos este, estas oraciones. No, no sé si queda claro ahora, mister. Sí, va, perfecto. Entonces, ahora sí les voy a compartir a ustedes eh, el enlace que les mencionaba sobre el pasado perfecto. Voy a detener. Bueno, lo que vamos a hacer ahí, aquí ahorita, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No sé si todos tienen acceso al chat de esta videoconferencia. Sí, sí, sí. Bueno, entonces he compartido, sí, sí. He compartido por ahí el, el enlace. Vayan al enlace y ahí vamos a tener las oraciones. Intentemos completar eh, el mayor número que podamos en 10 minutos. Ese es el tiempo que vamos a tener. No, no veo ¿Sí? el link, sí. ¿No lo ve? Debe ser en, en el chat de la videoconferencia, no ah, en WhatsApp. Ok, ok, ok. okay. Bueno, si tiene alguna consulta, aquí estoy disponible para que ustedes me pregunten. Es past perfect, teacher. teacher. Sí, 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 es pasado perfecto, past perfect. En negative dice no. Uh, depende, negative. depende de lo que se vaya mostrando ahí. Por ejemplo, si dentro del paréntesis le aparece not más el verbo, entonces tiene que ser la estructura en negativo. Pero si no lleva... El not tiene que ser en afirmativo o dependiendo eh, de, la, de la oración, porque este también puede ser una pregunta. Ok, thank you.
Amor, pase normal. Pase normal que la vea.
bin ich nicht sehr. Okay, sir, thanks for letting me know. All, all the sentences are correct? Yes. Okay, excellent, very good. I am finished too. Okay, sir, perfect. We're going to wait for Ms. Castro and Ms. Duran and also Mr. Santos. I mean, Miss Santos, sorry, Miss Santos. I'm finished. Okay, Miss. Thank you for letting me know. Finish, teacher. Okay, okay, perfect. We are going to move on to the next topic. Okay, uh, we're going to move on the next topic. So we're going to be uh, finishing all these uh, section number four. Um, as you note, uh, after these videos, um, we have a, the last exercise. It's not as check, and we are going to find this exercise in a 4.11. Um, I'm going to share my screen right now. I don't know if you had to work on that exercise right now or, or you haven't. Do you work in this exercise before? Is exercise 4.11. Do you work on this? Yes, no? Yes. 
Yeah, oh, um, okay, okay. So that ring gonna be, uh, I think, easy for uh, completing this, this exercise. Um, the instruction sets, fill in the blanks with the correct uh, form. I, that word must be form. <laughs> I don't know what it, why it says for, <clears throat> but it's for of the verse given. What are the verse given? The ones that we have in brackets. Um, use simple past, past continuous, or past perfect as correspond there. Um, we're going to start with the with first sentence, <clears throat> and it says, A thief, a, we have in the brackets, uh, there, break, uh, I mean, break into. What is the correct form of it? Broke into. I, I can okay. hear you. Can you repeat it again? Broke into. Okay, broke into. into. Okay, a thief broke into your house last night while well, my sister and I we're picking up a visa for dinner. I guess we left. Had left. Had left. Okay. The door unlocked because that's how the thief go into the house. Very good. So number two, sentence number two, it says, I in this case, what must be the answer? In this case, what what uh, do we have for this for this blank space? We have the very shop. Hello? You don't know? No, teacher. It's wrong, please. No? I have chocolate. No, teacher. I don't know. OK, you don't know. So in this case, it has to be shop in pass. I think it's in that in this way. Okay. With some friends yesterday, and I lost my keys. Luckily, I I in this case, when I use a uh, so I'm going to give you Gabe. Have yeah. Have given. Had given. Had given. Okay, had given a friend a copy of them. And she came over and let me into my apartment. Number three. I was driving around with friends all day on Sunday. And I out. I ran out. And I ran out. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. Uh, off gas on the freeway. Luckily, I. What could be the possible answer there? Had there. Brown. Had brow. Oh, so I'm, I'm writing. Oh, the in the other space just give me a second i'm going to copy and paste this here couldn't paste this here okay so let's send so and there is some mistakes where all oh, this okay so this is a mistake right was shopping was shopping, right? Was shopping. Okay. 
Ah, okay, very good, excellent. Thank you, Miss. So I was shopping with some friend yesterday and I lost my keys. Very good. So, and that's the last exercise for section number uh, four. For next class, we're going to be discussing um, uh, about the section number five. In the section number five, here we have a, the title that it says, um, Crossing Cultures. So in this topic, we're going to be discussing in, in lesson number one, Uh, about cultural experience, uh, crossing cultural experience, okay? The uh, lesson objective for this is, in this class, you will learn how, about different cultures around the world. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to be discussing next class. That that's means this coming uh, Monday. So before leaving the video conference, I would like to uh, ask you about if you have any question, um, if you have any question for any of, of the topics that we have been discussing previously, or I don't know if you have a, any question about the topic that we discussed uh, tonight, or maybe you had fun and exercise that has a mistake there and you want to report it, I don't know. Or everything is clear, everything is good. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. For, for this moment, yes. Okay, very good. So um, I'm going to I'm going to um, give you an exercise. This is just for having fun. Um, it, it's a a word search that I will share to you, but I will share it using the uh, WhatsApp group there. Okay. So okay. this is just for practicing vocabulary. Um, it's now related to the, the topic that we're discussing. It's going to be related about cultures, okay? So this is just for having fun and maybe you can learn a word there that you haven't listened for. So that's been all for tonight. Uh, I think that if you don't have any question, something uh, to ask, uh, so you can leave the video conference. And, uh, well, I will say have a nice night and blessings uh, to everybody. Okay. Thank you, teacher. Good night, Thank good night you. everybody. Good night. Good night. Everybody. Good night. Good night. See you Monday. See you on Monday. Bye bye. Bye. bye.